start understanding the leagues and divisions? Yeah, well, I mean, talking about the leagues, um, you know, in college sports, uh, there's there's different types of leagues, like you were saying. It's kind of like, uh, if I want to give an example, like baseball. Um, you know, they have the MLB, you got your AAA, you have your AA. So there's different leagues, of course. Um, here, the leagues that we're talking about is NCAA, NAIA, the JUCO, and then again, it breaks down in, you know, divisions within each league. So that's something that you can uh, cover for us, Tarek. Okay. So yeah, like with the NCAA, you got division one, two, and three. And what people should understand is that division one, two, and three doesn't always necessarily equate to the hierarchy. Like you were saying, John, in baseball, for example, if you have triple A, double A, single A, that's going to move you up the levels and then eventually into the majors. Right. Now, to some degree, it is like that but it's not all across the board. So there are division one programs that do not have the same level of athletic, you know, uh, skill set on their teams or, or their teams aren't as strong as maybe a division two team or a right. division three team or an NAI or junior college team. So people have to understand that first and foremost. And that's in all sports. I mean, you see it all right. the time where you have, you know, depending on what sport your schedule you have, you know, you have division threes beating division ones and, vice versa, of course. So it happens in all sports. Right. And initially it was built on that hierarchy though. Right. Just like it is in soccer. So if you're a football slash soccer fan, whatever you call it, whether you're in Europe or, or North America, um, you know, if you're playing in the Bundesliga, the first division or the Italian Serie A, or if you're playing in, you know, any of these premier league versus the second division, that's all based on literally your results and how good the teams are. You know, the top division is the top. And like you said, John, um, it was initially built like that, but it's not the case in today's day. So people have to first and foremost understand that. Right. Secondly, you have to understand where what what's the differences. And so, in Division One and Two, there are athletic scholarships. And we're talking about NCAA here. And in Division Three, there aren't athletic scholarships. Now, people immediately say, "Well, there's no athletic scholarships. You know, screw Division Three." Like, I'm not going to look at Division Three. No, no, no. The most number of schools are actually Division Three that offer sports. So you're more likely to play Division Three than Division One and Two. So then the question becomes, how am I going to play Division Three if there's no athletic scholarships? Well, there are other opportunities. There is financial aid that you could qualify for, and there are academic scholarships and grants and stuff that you qualify for. Having said that, there is a group of people that are also willing and able to pay a higher amount to go to college and still be a student athlete and have that experience. Um, so you can't just say, well, I'm, I don't want to pay for school or much for school. So I'm going to exclude division three. No, there's financial aid that could amount to full being get covered your full, you know, tuition and room and board and everything. And there could be situations on the opposite end of division one and two, where they don't offer you a much or anything. Right. So, so that's the differences. But it doesn't stop Division One and Two schools from giving you ac academic money, and it doesn't stop the Division Three schools from giving you academic money and financial aid. Everybody can do it. So you can't really generalize and target schools based on a financial aspect, initially at least. Right. Now, an NAIA is another one of the leagues um, that people forget about. The NAIA is just like the NCAA. It has about 300 or so member schools, and that changes, you know, uh, depending on how many join or, or drop, but it's a division that offers you the same ability that you could have in division one, two, and three in the NCAA. And people think of it kind of like a second division as well, but it's not, there's a lot of teams in there at the NAIA that can compete with division one, two, three schools and still give you the same student athlete experience. It's almost like saying I'm playing in yeah, uh, soccer is a great example because there's so it's a worldwide sport. And, you know, it's like saying I play in the English Premier League or I play in the Spanish League or I play in the Italian League or the German League. You know, it's just another league, but it's still offering you competitive sports. And there are scholarships athletically for you. There are academic scholarships, depending on the schools and financial aid and all that. Yeah, and some people don't realize as well, but but the league itself and NAIA, they also have a couple divisions within that as well. They got their division one, division two, doesn't stand out as much with the NCAA, but it's, it's there. So it's still tiered down. 
Right. And on that note, I would say that every different sports have different divisions within them. Like in NAIA, certain sports don't have a breakdown of divisions and right. other sports do, but that's a very good point. So it depends on your sport. Now the NJCAA, the junior college, otherwise known as JUCO, has is about two-year colleges. So these are two-year colleges, not four-year colleges. So you go there for two years and then you end up going to a four-year college, whether it's NCAA school or an NAIA school, it doesn't matter. But there, that's another league where people come in for various reasons. And we'll talk about that in the eligibility section. Um, but that is a league that could be a fit for you depending on your situation. Again, some people look at it as a negative. They look at it like, oh, I'm getting downgraded to this two-year school. No, for some people, it could be a better avenue to get to that next school. And there's so many reasons. It could be financially, bigger scholarships. It could be a better fit academically. It could help you in so many ways. So I think the big takeaway with understanding the leagues and divisions is knowing that you have to explore everything and you right. have to understand where you might fit, but don't discount anything based on all these biases and what you guys think you hear, because that's the biggest mistake people make. Can you have a great student athlete experience at each one of these leagues and divisions? Absolutely. Is one better than another? No. Of course you can. And I mean, for some sports, like, I mean, from our experience, um, you know, with, with NCAA um, football, for example, even the top programs in the nation, there's a lot of players that transfer out of, you know, junior colleges to go to these schools, right? Just because um, for specific reasons, like you were saying, whether they were having financial difficulties, academic difficulties, or just, you know, getting more mature your first couple of years in college and then going on. People usually transfer, John, as you know, because of the lack of education that they have and the lack of, you know, time they spend trying to make an educated decision because they have a lack of education. So they're unable at times to make an educated decision on where they should go. And Prior, they transfer yeah. out, like you said, like in football, for example, um, that was a good example where, yeah, you know, you may come on and not realize like, hey, I'm not starting for this team and I'm not getting any playing time. And really my student athlete experience at this school is not as good as it should be. And it could be better at another school. That could be at a, you know, you might be playing division one at some like Kentucky, but realize you don't even get to play. So what good is it? So somebody might go to uh, Marshall, you know, a division two and feel like they get the opportunity to play and the atmosphere is great there too. Maybe it's not 80,000 fans, but it's 40,000 fans. And you know what I, like you got to go where you fit. 